Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a new study that claims to have discovered potentially a DNA from an ancient dinosaur. A study that as always you can find in the description below. And so what I wanted to do in this video is discuss some of the implications coming from the study and why some scientists are going to be arguing about this for many years to come. Which means that just about now you should probably hear the theme from the Jurassic Park playing in your head. Why imagine this, Anton? Why don't you just put it in the video? Copyright. It's all about copyright. Anyway, so this right here was a transformational movie for me when I watched it when I was really young. And honestly, I think this is one of the reasons why I became extremely interested in science. I remember back in the days, I even wrote an essay, I think it was middle school or possibly elementary school, about how I actually wanted to become a paleontologist and wanted to spend my life going around different countries, digging up rocks and finding incredible dinosaurs. Naturally, all of this was inspired by the Jurassic Park. Even though I did get to experience geological research and work with a lot of different geological samples, including meteorites, the Jurassic Park slash paleontology dream never came true. Nevertheless, I'm sure some of the young kids who were inspired by the movie ended up actually becoming paleontologists and writing some of these papers. At least that's what I like to imagine. But the thing is, as we discovered in the last couple of decades, trying to recover DNA of a dinosaur from the sample is practically impossible. And let's actually start with that. What actually happens with the DNA after the organism is no longer alive? So when it comes to DNA itself as a molecule, we've discovered that it does disintegrate really, really quickly. There are several processes that cause it to sort of fall apart. For example, the fragmentation occurs really quickly. The DNA itself just sort of starts to fall apart. It also starts losing a lot of the amino acids on the inside and eventually transforms into an entirely different molecule, which then turn into a lot of organic material. The material that the molecule itself is made out of. And all of this happens really quickly. And so even when the DNA was in really low temperatures of about minus 5 degrees Celsius, after about 521 years, half of the molecules disintegrate completely. Which of course means that the half-life for DNA is 521 years. And the simulations even show that after about 6.8 million years, there's really only going to be one single base pair left. And that's after millions and millions of base pairs completely disintegrate. Although apparently the mitochondrial DNA, and that's of course the organelle responsible for producing a lot of energy inside the cell, does have a chance to last approximately twice as long. Nevertheless, because of this, today a lot of scientists believe that anything that's older than, let's just say, 1 million years will usually contain completely unrecoverable DNA that's going to be almost impossible to study. And so because of this, recovering dinosaur DNA becomes practically impossible. But naturally, it did not stop scientists from making certain claims. For example, a few decades ago, there was a claim that there was a recovered DNA from a bacteria that was about 400 million years old. But not everyone agreed with this discovery because some of the studies discovered that a lot of this ancient DNA usually comes from contamination. Or basically, it wasn't coming from the million-year-old organism, it was coming from some of the bacteria that was accidentally let into the sample. And so far, every single claim of potential discovery of DNA of a dinosaur or some ancient creature that's over a few million years old has been either contamination or in some cases just an erroneous analysis and a detection of something that was not actually there. For example, in one of the older papers, the potential DNA of a dinosaur turned out to be just a DNA of one of the scientists. Or to be more exact, it was a piece of a Y chromosome, meaning that it was a male human. But despite of all of this, there have been some really old DNA samples recovered from around the planet. The oldest samples to date all come from the ice samples from Greenland. And in this particular case, most of the DNA that's about 800,000 years old have so far been from various types of plants, suggesting that Greenland back in the days was indeed green. Or basically it wasn't as icy as it is today. The scientists have even been able to recover DNA from various ancient humans, including something that's about 100,000 years old from our cousin, the Neanderthal. And so because of these various studies on DNA, a lot of scientists almost gave up on trying to find anything that's over a few million years old. Mostly because the DNA molecule just doesn't seem to be resilient enough to survive long periods of time. Yet this study seems to have discovered something. At least it seems that way. So what exactly is this study about? It's about a tiny dinosaur. A dinosaur called Codipteryx that most likely resembled something like this. 
A dinosaur found in China, and it seems to have existed approximately 125 million years ago. And as you can see from this image, it was pretty small, resembling a typical chicken both in size and in appearance. But when the scientists in the study extracted one of the femurs, the tiny bone you see right here, and then used different types of molecular analysis on the cells of the cartilage from this femur, something unusual happened to these particular cells. As you can see from this image, they turn purple. Now on the right, this is the chicken cells. On the left, that's the dinosaur cells. In the study, the scientists used a chemical compound that's normally used to try to dye various samples. This is known as the hematoxylin. And this compound is usually used to try to mark various types of nuclei. It generally tends to bind to a nucleus and then dyes it purple. And what this image right here shows us is that even though most cells did not really appear purple, there was one cell right here that did turn purple, suggesting that the nucleus was possibly still there. Even showing something that resembled dark purple threads that might have been threads of chromatin. And we know that in a typical cell, chromatin is usually made of extremely packed strands of DNA. The strands that seem to appear in this image as well. Now this is of course an extremely preliminary discovery, and for all we know, once again, this could be some sort of a contamination, or possibly has some sort of a completely different explanation. For example, maybe because of the study we'll discover that hematoxylin can also bind to something else, something that we never knew before. Nevertheless, because this sample was preserved so well, at the moment the scientists actually have quite a lot of hope that maybe it is DNA after all. And one of the reasons why there is hope is because of the place where all of this was found. It's known as the Jihol Biota. The region known for a lot of really exceptionally preserved samples, mostly due to a lot of the volcanic ash here that ended up preserving a lot of these really ancient samples, keeping them enclosed in the volcanic ash that prevented any kind of a contamination. At the same time, when studying the sample, the scientists realized that a lot of the components in the sample have undergone a process known as silicification. Or in other words, a lot of these cell components got replaced by silicates, which could have helped preserve the materials inside the cells for a much longer time. But quite a lot of new techniques were used in the study, including the ability to actually identify specific types of cells, improving the ability to both extract and observe various cellular formations. And so just the fact that they're actually able to see individual cells is already quite impressive and quite a huge groundbreaking achievement. And don't forget, the cell is 125 million years old, so this is already pretty cool. But the next step for this particular study is to confirm their discovery. They're going to be using other chemicals, other staining agents, in order to see if this is indeed some sort of a leftover DNA. And if this is dinosaur DNA, there's going to be quite a lot of different discussion about how it was preserved and what exactly caused this DNA to stay only partially damaged for millions and millions of years. And so the study, without a question, shows us that a lot of these samples, especially from this region, do not all seem to be just rock. Some of the materials seem to be at least partially organic. And so if the scientists using the same method start discovering even more of these unusual cells and even more DNA from various samples, maybe it's going to be time for me to go back to my childhood dream and make the Jurassic Park a reality. But we have to be careful here. This was only released a few weeks ago, there haven't really been any follow-ups, and it will probably take years to finally establish what exactly was discovered in this paper and whether these particular techniques were used as they were supposed to be used. More importantly, until we find more samples and more unusual cells, so specifically something that looks kind of like this, we cannot really come to any definitive conclusions just yet. And so, until we learn more, I'm going to keep my hopes up, and I'm definitely going to be following this up with another video once more studies come out. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye. And completely unrelated, and here's the irony of my voice. A week after I got fully vaccinated, I catch cold. Because apparently, other viruses are still around. So, yeah. Stay safe.